Hello folks, it's Jason Christman here of JC's Bees. Today I want to talk about mason bees. First, let's break down a few facts about the mason bees. Mason bees will fly at 54 degrees. They will also fly in a light rain. And that kind of leads back to their, how they got their name, mason bee. They're kind of like a brick mason. The mason bee needs mud to make little mud plugs after it lays each egg. You can notice here in this picture the mason bee leaving the hole. This hole is where she lays her eggs. And after she lays her eggs and packs pollen around it and nectar, she will go get mud and then put a mud plug and then she'll start the whole process over again. When it comes to pollination, these little bees are amazing. To pollinate this full-size fruit tree you see here, it would take roughly seven mason bees to pollinate this whole tree. Now in the honeybee world, it would take roughly 600 honeybees to pollinate the tree. Isn't that amazing? Okay, now we'll go over some of the basic information you will need to know to build your own mason bee house. To start with, the block will need to be 6 inches deep. And for mine, I made it 5 inches wide. The holes need to be laid out 3 quarters of an inch apart, as you can see here. To drill your hole six inches deep, you're going to need an extra long drill bit. Keep that in mind when building. I chose to miter the tops of mine to give them a roof, so I lost a few holes in the process, but that's all right. Now to cover the holes on the back, I chose to use plexiglass, which I will screw on. To keep the light from getting through the plexiglass, I just used Gorilla Tape, and this will also help keep the weather from getting in the edges of the plexiglass. These are all 3 8 holes, and they're 6 inches deep. My block is 6 inches deep. And then on the back, I basically just took a piece of plexiglass, as you can see here, and uh, I covered it with Gorilla Tape. And the reason I did that was to help, when I screw this down, the duct tapes help seal the edges to keep any bugs from getting in the edge here and it also keeps the light from getting in because I figured the mason bee is going to want it dark when it crawls back in the hole. So when it comes time to remove those tubes I'm able to take this panel off and do so. Now let me show you real quick how these tubes are made. It's very simple. And you use parchment paper and I had cut a bunch of them here Mine are three by seven inches. And I'm basically going to take and lay it out like this. I'm going to wrap my pencil up in there, a number two pencil. And I'm just going to roll it up. And then I pick it up while it's wound nice and tight. And then we're going to shove it into this hole right here. And after we get it through, I'm able to reach the back and pull out the pencil. Now you can see on the back how all these stick out. And the reason for that is, <coughs> before I put the cover back on, the back, this cover, what we will do, we will bend each one of these over, like so all the way until we get them all bent over and then I'll screw this cover back on I'll put this outside and come next fall I'll be able to grab the end of this tube and pull it out and it'll enroll so I can take the cocoons out and check them for mites and clean them and, and whatnot otherwise if you just drill the holes in the blocks which I have done in the past and set out around our gardens you're not able to transfer the cocoons and maintenance the holes. Basically, the only thing you can do is redrill them each year. So that kind of defeats the purpose of building up the population of mason bees when you're having to drill the hole each time. So just a real simple design there, folk. Mason bee is kind of your own personal bees for your own yard. They don't travel very far. So um, that said, like I say, they're kind of your own personal bees. 
They'll visit anywhere from 75 to 150 flowers in a day's time. And thanks for watching JC's Bees.